Welcome to Northwest Digital News. I'm Kevin Hunter with Chris Bornstead and Kyle Torgerson in studio. It is a beautiful Wednesday afternoon, August the 15th. Kyle, start us off with a weather report. It's a bit smoky. <laughs> it's a bit, a bit smoky, smoky out. Yeah. Yes, it is. Today's going to be a high of 86 with a low of 54. It's going to be sunny with some smoke. Um, be careful. I did <laughs> hear some warnings that or I've heard some warnings, same thing, um, that to stay inside and go outside if you have to, the smoke is just going to get worse. Um, so keep your children inside, be careful. Um, it's going to be mid-70s all the way up to Saturday and then 80s, and then even Monday hitting a nice 91. And stay in the 90s, 90s after that. So if you guys spent any amount of time outside yesterday, uh, I got to believe we eclipsed 100 degrees. It was smoking hot out there. Chris? Were you I, 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 I spent like 40 minutes in the pool, and to be honest, you guys, I had to get out after like 40 minutes and go inside. Uh, my eyes were irritable. Uh, I couldn't breathe the greatest. I had I had a little bit of issues with the breathing. Breath was short, and uh, it was just plain nasty out. So uh, I pulled the kids inside and said, you know what, we're going to just kind of hang out here in the air conditioning area Absolutely. of the, the house today. And, of course, had to explain to them the the issues with air quality and, and then, you know, the poor forest management that is leading to these fires. Mm -hmm. You know, I explained to them that we have to make some changes. So, Excellent. Well, we have a couple of great topics on the show today. Kyle, you can wipe off that weather uh, map up there. We have a couple of great topics on the show today. We're going to talk about uh, vocational education here today. And then we have a, one other story to cover here in the end. So, but let's get started with the uh, vocational programs. First of all, one of the things that I want to say is that um, many people that know me personally and professionally and have worked with me in various capacities have always remarked to me um, how many skill sets I have in various different areas. And so as an example, um, let's just take uh, construction. If I was to start a home building project for myself today, I could excavate it. I could put in my own foundation. I'd frame the place. I'd put the electrical, the plumbing, the heating, the cooling, everything else in it. I'd insulate it, site it, windows and doors, drywall it, mud and tape it, paint it, put the shingles on it, and hand my wife the keys. So you're Hi, saying Kevin. you went to vocational school. And <laughs> a lot of that I picked up as in a vocational program. So the interesting part is, is that um, I got a chance to do some of this stuff as a youngster before I graduated, but in this, my senior year in high school, I was in a high school vocational program where we excavated a piece of property where we put the foundations in and we built the house completely from scratch up. And they had um, licensed professionals that came in and worked with us on the electrical components and the plumbing, the heating, cooling, the various things that um, we needed to make sure were done uh, properly. But all of that I got before I graduated high school. And so then, you know, going out and working in the fields of construction later, um, that was actually hugely uh, influential in understanding the, the total nature of construction because I could be working on any aspect of the job and I had a clue who was there before me and I had a clue who was coming next. And those considerations were taken into, you know, the, the work that I was doing at the time. And a lot of times, you know, even today, which we have a steadily shrinking workforce of people with with uh, just even general capabilities in the construction field. Um, today, if you get a carpenter out on a job site, it's not unusual at all uh, to move on to the next phase and have to get completely different people because they have no idea how to move from the, the specific tasks they may have been working on on that job. Kyle? Well, um, I graduated in 2017. I feel like everything I talk about is from high school. Um, there's it it new, should be. I mean, yeah. Um, talking about it and talking about it, you actually had those skills graduating. Mm -hmm. My eighth grade year, um, which is middle school, they came up with a program. It's called Geometry and Construction. It's a two-period class. So you, mm -hmm. for two hours straight, you're in the – for one – the first hour, you're in the classroom learning geometry. And the second hour, you're actually building a home that they mm -hmm. can sell or use it on the Kelso school district. So not only are you learning, but you're also putting that into practice. Sure. So they're actually doing that at Kelso High School, and they're doing really well. They've made a lot of portables. they made a lot of sheds, and the stuff they make is pretty great. Um, I'm just glad that that program is in Kelso, and yeah. So, you know, it's, you mentioned the eighth grade. You know, it's an interesting thing is I was actually in Cascade uh, schools in the eighth grade, 
and I was in metal shop and I made this 13 inch James Bowie knife because I was reading all these stuff about, you know, the West and everything else. And I thought it'd be really cool to have this Jim Bowie knife. And so I made this 13 inch blade that was sharpened on the top and on the bottom, uh, handle on it, everything done, uh, a leather sheath on it. And I actually took that home on the bus. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine that happening today? I almost want to cry. I have tears forming because that wouldn't fly today. <laughs> oh, no, it wouldn't fly at all. But but my point going back to even if, even if, let's, let's say if even transporting on the bus is inappropriate today, um, does a kid have an opportunity to learn how to use a cutting torch, an acetylene cutting torch like I knew how to use in the eighth grade and select the proper steels? It was a German steel that I, I selected for that and then go on to actually make that. And there was obviously, I wasn't the only one, there was a whole classroom of, of uh, eighth graders who were working on metal related shop and, and pretty much everybody in the class that I knew of um, got an opportunity to do some wel uh, welding with uh, gas and then also arc welding too. And, and there was many times like throughout my high school career later, um, being uh, back in the Midwest where I was in welding classes and actually became a very proficient welder before I left high school too. Well, I can tell you that all the metalworking and everything like that in middle school is not there um, for my school district, that, that is. Um, but it all moved to Kelso, I mean, mm -hmm. the high school, to mm -hmm. the high school. Right. So um, there are welding classes and there's automotive right. classes. So um, <clears throat> there is vocational stuff. What, what's yeah. the extent of the automotive class? I'm, I'm curious because the vocational program that was in a very small high school, but they had a vocational program that was built nearby there and many of the high schools used it. But their automotive program um, included very in-depth auto mechanics and very in-depth auto body. Yeah, it's, 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 it's auto mechanics for sure, definitely here at Kelso High School. My son was in the class, and he also did welding over there. So uh, they actually get the welding kids to work over in the auto body shop a lot too. So did, I think I heard that they actually brought in um, cars that needed mm -hmm. to be yeah. fixed up, like random mm -hmm. people's yep. cars, and actually brought them into the shop and worked on them. Yeah, we mm -hmm. took an engine to um last 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 summer even after he got out of high school we, mm -hmm. we uh pulled an engine out of an old toyota and uh we took it over there and we took it to the high school and they'll do whatever they do with it they'll re teach the kids how to fix it and then they'll turn around and do something with it so here's one of the things that if you notice in the title of the show today we talk about um china's vocational program and their student-led learning now the, the reason why all of this is important is because we think about today here in the United States and the uh, number of people that talk about how the the, uh, the country of China and the Chinese government, the huge advantage they have in labor. And, and people assume that labor cost is substantially lower than in China than it is here. And would you be surprised if I told you that is no longer true? I am actually surprised. It is no longer true. Um, uh, Chinese people are paid just as well as workers are in other areas of the, of the world. The, it, the big reason why manufacturers and people here in the States and in other countries are continuing to go to China is because in the years that the U.S. decided that vocational programs weren't that important, that manufacturing was leaving or the building trades things weren't that important and they were recommending people get more uh, uh, education along the lines of associate degrees or things and other studies that were outside of using your hands and developing those that, that kind of skill set. The Chinese government recognized an opportunity and they jumped on it and it's become one of the biggest educational programs in their country and they now lead the world in the most talented skill set of vocational workers anywhere in the world. That's in China. We have um, a video clip that I want to share with people here on uh, just some of the uh, changes in the, the title of this video is changes in vocational schools made for better professionals in China. You can also hear a little bit about um, some of the student-led uh, learning that they're doing in this classroom. Check it out. Go ahead and roll that, Kai. China's traditional teaching method is teacher-centered. Teachers lecture and students listen in class. A World Bank-supported vocational education project in Yunnan province promoted a student-centered approach that turns students from passive listeners to active participants. A big focus of the project was training teachers who became change agents. Experts were brought in to provide a training course on competency-based active learning 
which focuses on cultivating the core skills and competencies that students will need in their future careers. 呃，和我以往的那个传统的教学相比，采用这个积极教学法来开展教学，它可以更大程度上的调动学生的那个自主学习的积极性，培养学生自己去学、自己获取知识的能力，同时呢，也培养了学生合作的这样一种精神。是现在这种新型教学法，我们不会分心。能力本位和这个积极教学法的这个课堂学习，这种课程的话呢，能让我。学了就会，学了就能用。嗯，接受过积极教学法这样教学的学生呢，他们在课堂上的表现力是完全不一样的，非常的自信。嗯，你比如说，当老师在提问的时候，学生呢，他都可以积极主动的来回答问题。那么在小组合作的过程当中啊，这些学生他也在这个过程当中学会了互相帮助、互相支持。更难能可贵的是，他们在这个活动中还学会了如何去接纳其他人的意见和建议。学校的发展，关键在教师。我们以这个项目的实施为契机，广泛的动员老师，投身到教学改革的浪潮中，参与改革。广大教师观念转变了，他们积极的参与到新课改的学习。培训，并且在自己的课堂教学中去身体力行。我们邀请周边十多所兄弟学校的老师，也一同参与到我们整个新课改的学习、培训活动当中。大家共同一块儿来分享，让他们也得到发展。Pause it there. Okay, um, something I want to point out about this video. You think about how impactful what they're sharing here, and apologize that this is all a um, Chinese uh, audio, but you saw all the text overlay in English to help uh, the English followers understand what was going on there. Um, but something I want to point out about this video. This is a huge learning experience for the United States. And how our how we, how our country can be better suited in terms of its technical education, and obviously all the communities around the United States could be learning from this as well. Look at the video: eight hundred and eighty-six views. What do you think the chances are that any of our communities, any of our states, anywhere that people are actually paying attention to this stuff going on overseas? Oh, probably not at all. I mean, if if you want to learn about overseas, you have to want to learn about that. You, you have know, to be curious right. about what's going on <laughs> overseas, and 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 we have to recognize that we don't live in a vacuum. There is no there is no country anywhere that is isolated to such an extent from the rest of the world that it doesn't matter what's going on. Of course, it matters, and it matters in a very significant way. Kyle, if you would open up a browser here in Google, and I just want to share this with people. So go ahead and open it up. Bring it up in the background, and I want to share. Um, go ahead and type in vocational programs in the United States. You need a space between your vocational and program. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's why this is important. Are those vocational schools? Do any of them look like vocational schools? If you click into these, you got Bates Technical College, Bellingham Technical College, uh, Clover Park Tech. These are tech schools, not vocational schools. And the vocational um, education that I'm talking about is the education that we can, you mentioned about in the eighth grade. I talked about things that I was exposed to in the eighth grade. And I had opportunities in high school in vocational education Already at an eighth grader, as a ninth grader, I was taking uh, architectural drafting in tenth grade. I was in automotive auto body and uh, mechanical courses uh, in the eleventh grade, and I take construction building trades um, in the senior year. And what was interesting is, I remember the uh, the principal of the high school I was in. He came and asked me one time. He goes, "Why do you take these?" <laughs> it's like because they're available. He's, he says, I know, but you took like a drafting course back in the 10th grade. And now this construction trade uh, class also includes some architectural drafting. Like you're going to have to design 
the home that you're going to build. And then so he goes, I, I was just kind of curious. It seems like you doubled up on some of the stuff. And I was like, but you know what? I, I can say today I have never, ever regretted the opportunity. Um, the fact that I had that opportunity available and took advantage of it. So that's that's really my um, that point. My point with all this. Chris, did, did you have an opportunity to do any of this vocational stuff uh, back in your school days? You know, we did, we had shop class and I mean, there was auto body class and, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you had to sign up for them. Um, I didn't No, I, I, you know, I did take shop class, uh, but I think we were just, I mean, the only thing that we had was auto shop at that time. There is a article, Kyle, which I'm going to send to you and I want you to bring this up on the uh, screen. So I'll, I'll send it to you here. Um, I do have a little breaking news. Go ahead. You know? Uh, this is from the Cowlitz County Sheriff's Department. They have found they were had a missing hiker or a missing uh, person up around Mount St. Helens, and they just found him alive. Oh so that gosh, is good that's, news. That's awesome. yeah, I, I, think I saw that like story the, released like a week or so ago. Yeah, so he, he was out there like four days uh, surviving on his own, and they found him, and he is, he is fine. So that is, that's awesome. So you know, was this a case of a lost hiker? What does it say? Uh, I don't know. Apparently the guy I think was from back east somewhere ohio so i think he's you know vacationing or I, I don't know i just i don't have that answer but uh he has been found and that's that's awesome awesome news four days surviving out there with nothing that he needed uh is pretty good fantastic fantastic bring up this article here kyle on from us news uh the title of the article is vocational high schools career path or kiss of death we had a conversation yesterday with Harry Brailsford from SMB Nation. We we're talking about um, different options that people thinking about getting into tech and maybe doing a, a network consulting, that sort of thing. What were some of the ideas that Harry shared uh, for consideration of younger people who are thinking of entering those uh, fields, Kyle? Do you remember? Job shadow. Job shadow was one of them. Um, many people have heard of either an apprentice um, and what are some of the other programs they have in employment that the exact word is uh, skipping my mind at the moment. Um, so you can either do like an apprenticeship, you can do like a job shadow. You've done some job shadowing uh, before. Um, what did you think about that? It was actually really interesting. It was really fun. I, not only was I able to actually learn about it, mm -hmm. but I was also fixing uh, computers myself and doing mm -hmm. it on my own. And if I needed help, I just, Hey, I need help. I'm stuck. Help. And they walked me through it. And then it was, since I was hands-on and I'm a hands-on learner, it was just, it was great. It's way better than reading about it, like on the internet or watching YouTube videos. It was just hands-on. It was there. And I'm actually learning what I'll need for that job mm -hmm. while doing that. Yeah. It's perfect. Fantastic. So one of the, one of the comments or part of our conversation we had yesterday was that, um, students who are either graduating with a two-year degree in a computer science uh, or a four-year degree in a computer science related, un unless the the education and the training was specific enough, because I know some of these four-year graduates that are graduating with computer science degrees are landing fantastic jobs as coders, programmers, et cetera, in some of the very large companies uh, in the United States. But there, and, and this is maybe a little bit more pointed at the two-year degrees in, in a computer field. Most of the feedback that I'm hearing from consulting organizations in computer networking are saying that that person is no better equipped to become a computer tech um, or a um, consultant in, in the computer field than when they started school. And that's an unfortunate thing because think of the tens of thousands of dollars they poured out for that, that education. And like... Um, Harry Relsford was saying yesterday, he says, you know, we're not, we're not uh, uh, recommending that somebody not seek a higher education because they should, but think about the other ways in which you can either add or do instead of, and Job Shadow was one of those really great ideas. I have a friend that actually goes to Perry Tech, and mm -hmm. I believe he's going some. He's doing something for devices communications, mm -hmm. so communications between like servers and things like that, and tech stuff. I don't know the names of, um, but he's going there, and he doesn't say he's going to school. He says he's going to work because mm -hmm. he's there and he's working with the teacher. And he's actually telling me the story about he was um, I'm working on the server and he couldn't update it at all he could not update it at all and there's just this one issue and then he finally clicked on it he's like fine clicks on it and he's like oh 
okay. Then it turns out that little thing actually was able to update everything by itself. So he just clicked on the settings. Mm-hmm. He went to the teacher and the teacher's like, oh, okay, I thought it was that too. The teacher had no idea either. They were mm-hmm. working on it together, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Our oldest son was just got back from Peritech and already has a job. So Fantastic. he's working for a shipyard down in Portland. So nice. Boom. It's, it's true. They say that, you know, 80, like 85% of these te- uh, kids that go to these tech schools have a job b- before they get out. And the remaining kids that don't have a job is because they didn't want one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's working for our kids. And as far as, you know, doing this in high school, there are some people that just learn better with their hands that mm-hmm. aren't very good with, with books and stuff like that. And so this is a great opportunity for those guys. Well, if, if it's not in your DNA or in your psyche, your makeup to be a doctor or lawyer or one of these other professions, you might consider uh, get, you know, choosing a career path that allows you to use your hands and learn those skills there. Because there's, there's many of these people that are in six-figure income jobs because of what they learned early on in life and they learned in these programs. So um, a, just a really quick example I want to share here because we shared it yesterday on Tech Tuesday, but a quick example when Kyle was mentioning about job shadow. Um, a young gentleman, he was actually a, a graduate, had a four-year degree in a marketing program, but he was looking for a way to get into a, he called his dream company uh, in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. And, but he had gone there many times to apply. Um, they said they weren't hiring. There was no opportunity for him to get in the organization. Well, I had a chance to visit with him and suggested to him that he consider a job shadow. He's like, how do I do that? He says, you call the place up and ask him if he can come to work for free and just observe what one of the professionals are doing so that you could possibly consider that job as a career path. Well, he showed up on day one. I told him, don't blow the opportunity. Go there and do a great job for them. So he did. They asked him to come back the following day. And then he got an invite back the following day. And the following day and the next Monday, there was a job offer on the table for him. Was he so, watching what they were doing, or actually were interacting? And I don't suggest you sit them. there and watch them like okay. a stump on a like a bump on a log. Aha, no, really. No. Get involved. <laughs> ask how you can help and be an active participant in what's going on. And that's exactly what he did. And he's now working for his dream company. Now, for that's pe- how he got in the door. Now, people in the same shoes that are trying to get into a company or do something or trying to figure out what they want to do. Um, my mom gave me devi- some advice that I actually use quite often. Mm-hmm. The worst thing they can do is say no. Right. So That's like if correct. you're selling things door to door, right. Or if mm-hmm. you're like asking for a job shadow or, Hey, can I work for you or whatever? The worst thing they're going to do is say no. Mm-hmm. So why be afraid of it? You know, to, to that point, And I'm glad you mentioned that to that point, I was at, I was um, giving us a, a speech in a place uh, that I was asked to come speak at. And one of the um, things that I was asked to address was the no and how you, how you work, how you get past the no and you continue going on and, and uh, I was standing in the in the front of this uh, auditorium where all these people were at, and I took a large brown paper sack, and I had had uh, somebody cut up for me these green pieces of paper that were the same size as a dollar bill. And no, I wasn't printing counterfeit money. So I had all these uh, I had all these green pieces of paper cut up the size of a dollar bill, and I dropped a hundred pieces of these paper in the thing, and then I took two hundred bucks out of my pocket in twenty dollar bills and dropped them into the bag and shook it up, and I asked, "Does anybody in the room want to put their hand in the in the bag and draw out a piece of paper and everybody wanted to and i said why would you be interested because there's only 10 20 bills in there and there's 100 pieces of green paper why would you put your hand in there and so i had a number of people do it and after i went through like uh 10 or 15 people a couple of them had drawn out a 20 dollars bill and i went back to those that got a green piece of paper and i said do you want to try again and they were saying, absolutely, I do. And I said, why? And they said, because we know there's more 20s in the bag. <laughs> Every single person you talk to is a potential $20 bill. All you're doing is sorting out whether it's a green piece of paper or a 20, but the yeses are there. Just keep working at it. You'll find them. It's really that simple. Wow. And, and a lot of people don't think about it in that aspect, but they, they, they hear that no or that um, rejection. Another really great story I like to share on that level Uh, Colonel Sanders, who started Kentucky Fried Chicken. A lot of people don't know his story, but when he got his first Social Security retirement check and it was $92 a month, he decided that wasn't going to be uh, sufficient to sustain him. And he had been told that he had this chicken recipe that was great. He would do these backyard barbecues. And he was told that this recipe was great. And he ought to consider about 
you know, going to a, a restaurant or whatever and offering this recipe elsewhere. So he did it and he got told no and he got told no and he got told no so many times he had to leave his own town and then went to another town. He did this 900 and some times before he got a yes. There would be no Kentucky Fried Chicken if Colonel Sanders believed that no's were the reason to stop. And the, and the evidence of that kind of commitment to a dream suggests that if that no that he finally got, or that yes that he finally got had been a no, he'd have kept asking. The guy was too determined to go after his goal, and Kentucky Fried Chicken happened because the guy wasn't afraid of a no. So, and I don't suggest that somebody go out and just keep pounding your head against the pavement. If you get a lot of no's, you might want to think about how you're presenting what you're doing and, and the value proposition that you have. You could be making some mistakes and all that. So go present your ideas to friends and other people and get some feedback on it. Um, keep tweaking it. Keep working on it. But always know that the S is out there. The $20 bills are in the bag. All right, we have one other story that we wanted to share here before we go off uh, air today. This was regarding a 15-year-old girl um, who had a... Chris, if you would, go ahead and share the story. Well, we got to get it up there first. Let's... All right. Let's get the story up there, and then, then we can go from there. But basically, the gist of it is that a 15-year-old girl was witnessing her mom being choked out by... Uh, the boyfriend, mm -hmm. and was smart enough to go grab the gun and use it and save her, save them all. So shot and killed uh, the bad guy, and uh, yeah, that's that's basically what this, this story is about. Yeah, so she defended her mother for people that that think that there's there's an inappropriate place for the use of uh, firearms. W what a great example. And the um, law enforcement agencies that have uh, gone through and looked at the story already have agreed that the young girl was totally in line defending yeah. her mother. Yeah. Um, and no charges are being pressed against Correct. her. So, all right. Well, that's going to conclude our show here on Northwest Digital News. I hope you go out and uh, find ways to use your skills uh, in ways that you may not have considered. And even if you're a college graduate, maybe got a bachelor's, maybe got a master's, I know people with a PhD that have spent all kinds of time in college and yet to find work. Maybe take some of the considerations or ideas that we gave you today and go out and make it a better life for yourself. I'm Kevin Hunter here on Northwest Digital News. Chris Bornstead, Kyle Torgerson. Till next time, take care.